said to Metrolinx, A, B, C, Queen Street, all day go, your Ontario line on Highway 10. That is our position. It is on record. In fact, if you pull the Brampton Guardian from December last year, I left it in my office, you will see an article about the LRT. It was one year ago. And it was giving councils conditions that you don't, you don't compromise Main Street South Council. You've been consistent. So I, I, I don't think you'd want to demonstrate when you're saying to Metrolinx, Queen Street's a priority. I think you still want to have staff uh, make the appropriate research to undertake that plan. It was your idea. I support it. And finally, that the clerk uh, send the copies out. So I'm trying to focus. I, I won't support uh, referring the entire matter. I'm asking to have the motion split. I'm asking to have each paragraph either voted as is for or opposed or place an amendment. And I do not support that we simply send it all away and we're not part of setting the table for mass transit or higher order transit funding for the residents of Brampton. The Here Ontario Zoom line fully articulated bus is not much larger than the LRT. One replaces the other. The, the bus going down the articulated Zoom bus that only makes it to square one has had a 98% increase in ridership. People are trying to get to work. Think of all the people on that line. Are they communicating with you? We had a, a full discussion a week ago and council said, we need to stay part of that conversation. I don't know what's happened in a week. That's why I asked for a lobby register. I don't know what new information we're going to have if we refer it. Because we're being told very clearly by our professional staff, this is your signal, Brampton's in the discussion about moving people throughout the GTA and in and out of Brampton. We want the Queen Street line. We want the return on investment. We have done our business case. We want all day go and we, we, are, not, we are not in favor of the LRT rails on Main Street in the heritage part of the city. That's been made abundantly clear and the environmental assessment is the proof of why it may not be workable. Why would we step back from having the evidence and the real proof as opposed to opinion? I work in a world of having all of the facts, so I urge council to continue with your recommendation. We'll go piece by piece, but I urge you to allow staff to continue in these negotiations. I urge you to communicate. We want to be part of the environmental assessment. That's the program that determines the costs of moving flower beds south of Steeles, for example. I'm interested. I want to know that. My residents or your residents want to know that. So why would we say we're just going to duck the tough decision because since last week there's no new information, nothing's changed, and now we're saying what we agreed on in a recorded vote last week Somehow, we, we should do differently this week. So I, I know that there's great concern by the residents on Main. We treasure our Main Street South. We treasure the heritage of the homes. We've invested in that. Yes, that's why I'm putting it. I'm moving this report now, paragraph by paragraph. No, no, not at all. So, Council, I'm going to ask. I'm, I will move this personally. I, I, I'm not, ca ca Councillor Sprovieri, Councillor Sprovieri, I can put a motion on the floor, anybody can. Then we debate the motion after it's properly on the floor. The motion is now being properly placed on the floor. You are on the list and you will have a chance to have your say and then you will have a chance to vote in favour, amend or oppose. That's the procedure we've been following by the procedural bylaw. Isn't that correct, Mr. Clerk? Yes, and, and in you. fact, the committee minutes and the committee recommendations are properly moved and on the floor for council consideration now. 
because they're minutes from committee. And they are amendable. My understanding is that the chair cannot make two motions. He has to remove herself from the chair in order to make motions. Is that not correct? Yes. They're doing procedural. We have procedures here. Through you, Madam Mayor. Um, the practice of this council has been to allow the chair to move motions. Having said that, the, the mayor just spoke with respect to her, her comments and her opinion on the series of clauses in recommendation CW342-2013, which are properly before council for consideration or amendment. It's in council's hands. Th thank you, uh, Mr. Clerk, and I will remind council that uh, there is a head of council report on every agenda moved by myself and seconded by one of you. So this is not something new today. Uh, so council, I'm prepared to uh, take, I recommend we take these one paragraph at a time so you can uh, have your say on each one. I ask for a recorded vote on every paragraph and I urge council to not remove the citizens of Brampton from the conversation around the future movement of people in rapid transit in and out of this city. We're going back to the list. Councillor Sprogieri speaking to the motion. In front of you. How many ways can I put this in? Well, for you. <laughs> Councillor Sprogieri. Well, th thank you, Madam Mayor. And, and just, just, um, just to uh, uh, just a, a point of clarification, I'd like to uh, ask staff. As the stands, uh, as the motion stands before us, the the scope of the EA that uh, MetroLinks will be undertaking is to is to look at Main Street only, right up to the train station. They're not looking at anything else. Uh, staff is going to do a, a bit of a study to see if there's any other possible routes, but the EA that Metrolinx is doing is only going to look at the one route. And so the, regardless of what staff comes up with, it's not part of the EA. It, it hasn't really as been assessed as an environmental assessment study that uh, Metrolinx will be doing. So really, whatever staff does will not have much uh, a pull of credibility or influence. Uh, at the end of the day, we may say, well, you know, council will decide, and I'm going to be one of those. That's, yeah, sure, you want to build it? Uh, you're saying that you can go up Main Street, but you stop at Steeles. That's what I will support. If we make that statement as a council, uh, what do you think Metrolink's reaction will be? Do you think, say, well, no, either it's either the train station or nothing? Or do they, you think they'll say, yeah, fine, we'll, we're happy with uh, um, Shoppers World and Steels. So what do you, what's your prediction uh, to the chief uh, based on this question that they're only looking at Main Street right up to the train station and the EA process? And what staff is doing is not really part of the EA, right? To you, Madam Mayor, uh, the EA project is based on the master plan work and the pre-consultation, which was a project from the Port Credit GO station to the Brampton GO station. That is the alignment that was chosen as part of the big move, as I indicated last week, uh, was confirmed through the master plan that was approved in, I believe it was 2010, and forms the basis of the EA. The work that staff have been asked to do is separate to the EA. It could come back to you at the same time as the results of the EA come back and would form part of that report that staff prepare for council. It could be then messaged to uh, council's response to the province can be messaged at that time, however you see fit, once you have all of that information in front of you. In order for the province to undertake an EA for some alternative route, the same level of work that has been done for the Here Ontario Main Street Corridor would have to be undertaken for that alternative route. In an, 
whenever that time should be. Um, that's not to say that that can't happen. Metrolinx could choose to make that a project in the future. It just wouldn't be part of this EA that's underway right now. So, um, so in other words, we can we can at the end of the day say to Metrolinx, um, even though they recommend to go right up to the train station, council will only support going to Steels, and that's and that's our bottom line. We can make that statement, and then Metrolinx will have to decide whether to move ahead, build it up to Steels, and perhaps look at other routes a staff may recommend. Is that if, what you're saying? If, if, I presume you're making that comment, if we should proceed with the EA, right. as it's set out today, right mm -hmm. up to the Brampton Go, right. but if Council made that decision later on not to proceed beyond Steeles, uh, then Metrolinx would have to make the decision based on their case benefit analysis, um, the business case, where and if they want to proceed with the line. So whether it would just be in Mississauga or whether it would stop at some other location or whether it would go up to Steeles. And if staff could come up with some other alternatives that make sense, they could say, well, okay, fine, we'll uh, uh, go up to Steeles and then do another EA to find another route. It's a possibility. It might not happen in yeah, for, yeah. for many, many years. Right, right because it's not been identified in the big move, it's not identified as a priority, so there's a whole uh, no. uh, framework that Metrolinx themselves would have to go through okay. to have that adopted uh, and as direction before okay. we could do that. So, 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 do you, do so you, just so that you yeah. understand, that would be way out in the future. Right. So just to um, get to my final point, do, do you think that, uh, and I believe it, most uh, the majority of council here doesn't support going through the downtown and up, up main right to the station uh, from what I'm uh, gathering. So couldn't we tell um, um, Metro Links that there's no will of council to really uh, go up Main Street and so maybe it'd be worth your while to look at other alternative routes through this EA process? Through you, Madam Mayor. They cannot look at an alternative route through this EA process. We have already been in this process, this TPAP process we entered into many, many months ago. We cannot change it at this stage. Metrolinx will not change the corridor for the purposes of the EA. And thus, you say you don't want to proceed with the EA in Brampton, then they will have to go back They'll have to rescope what the project is, uh, decide whether there's a benefit in proceeding or not. Okay, thank you. Councillor Moore. Um, thank you. Um, maybe the chief could repeat what she just said about Metrolinx participating in another EA. What I was what I was attempting to do was work on some language here that strengthened Metrolink's obligation to come to the table on an alternative route north of Namwood. And and so um, we haven't voted on number two yet, Mayor, Madam Mayor? Uh, Councillor, we haven't voted on any two of or the paragraphs four. and we're open to... What uh, I'm trying to yep. do is to incorporate some language that says we'll participate uh, or we'll issue the, the notice of study commencement for north of Steeles to Namwood and take the, the portion north of Namwood to the downtown go out of number two and find a way to obligate Metrolinx to participate in a future EA study for an alternative route that's identified or may be identified in number four. Because I think that's our problem, is that there's nothing in this resolution that, well, there's something in this resolution that, that requires our staff to spend a lot of time looking at routes that Metro Lakes can say, well, that's nice, good reading, but we're not doing anything with it. And so there's nothing in here that says Metro Lakes has to participate or, or come to the table. That's my problem. 
is that we'll be participating in something north of Steeles that, or north of Namwood that everybody around this table says is not a preferred route coming to the downtown Go Train Station. So we're wasting money, we're wasting time, and we're wasting the opportunity to look at other uh, preferred routes to take it north of Steeles and including north of Steeles up to areas as far north as Mayfield Side Road. So what does the language look like, Chief Ball? How do we amend the, the resolution before us so that some of us can, can confidently put our hand in, in the air and say, we're prepared to look, we're, we're pre prepared to participate in this project, we understand it's provincial priority, up to Nanwood. Beyond that, we want to see, or I, and I, pr quite frankly, saying that we have the right to, to vote it down uh, at this council. Uh, if they decide to do it, they're going to do it. They'll have had their homework all done at that point, and uh, it'll be more than a gun to our heads. It'll just be done. And that's the fear. And I think it's a real fear. Okay, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I, I feel I've said this a few times, and I will try one more time. The project, the EA project, the work that has been underway since I believe it was 2008 <coughs> into 2009, commenced then to now, has been from Port Credit to Brampton GO Station. So the EA pre-consultation and the project as it stands today that, we, that notice of commencement would be issued on for this next piece of the work that backs up the work that's been done since 2008 would be from Port Credit to the Brampton GO Station. If Council does not authorize to proceed with the notice of commencement for that length of the project from Port Credit to Brampton GO. So an all Go or nothing, all or nothing. Means that uh, there has to be a reassessment of the scope of the project. So it means nobody issues a notice of commencement. It means going back and having to rescope what that project would be and decide making a decision whether there is the, the business case and benefit for proceeding on that basis of it, not, of it not including that piece up to the Brampton Go. So the whole thing is off the table. If, we, if there's no notice of commencement to finish the project, we're off the table and back is to it? looking at then okay. what is the project. To the point of my question. Is so it possible for us? If I could just finish actually, because I want to get to the other part of your question about how to get Metrolinx at the table. You want Metrolinx to consider this altern the alternative. I understand that. There are a couple of ways to do that. We carry on with the work that we started back in 2008, 2009. As we've said in, in, in your uh, motion or the resolution that's in front of you, it's still that still has to come back here. The, the conclusions of that still have to come back here. So in the interim, staff can be working on some pre-work that would set you up for making a re recommendation to Metrolinx. So you have the EA, you have the results of that, and at the same time, you can go forward to Metrolinx and say, we've looked at that, we see that, we see, we have concerns with that, staff have looked at these alternatives, we, and you may decide that there's merit in going another route, then you have to present that case to Metrolinx and be heard by Metrolinx to get that on their radar. And I hear you, but, but there's nothing that obligates Metrolinx to listen to us. And so I'm asking the question on number two. Can we pass number two as is, subject to Metrolinx agreement to work with staff on an alternative route north of Nanwood? Because quite frankly, number four that says our staff are going to work on this is, or there's nothing that says we can't go ahead and pass number four, but there needs to be something that sends a very strong message to Metrolinx of what our expectations are from them. What does Brampton need out of this project? And quite frankly, when I identified the other four priorities that we need, this project isn't going to, uh, to satisfy any of those. So, can, is it possible to amend number two 
that says we authorize it so that it can proceed, but it's subject to Metrolink's agreement to work with staff on an alternative route north of Nanwood. Did you write that down, Mr. Clerk? <laughs> Well, it's, I, for me, the language is absolutely not strong enough. I think Metrolinx is going to say, as I said, nice reading. If they'll do nothing with it. Um, it's kind of interesting um, through you, Madam Mayor, that we were successful taking this exact tack with Queen Street. Because when they first came to the city with the Main Street project, we said, we said, all well and good, we'll support that on an ongoing basis, go through the study process, but our real priority is Queen Street. So they said, well, fine, you guys study it and tell us if there's a business case. So we did that. We did a business case for Queen Street, and it actually got it on the list. But it was us doing the heavy lifting because we had to bring it to them. So there is established precedent. This project, the way this resolution coming out of committee last week is exactly how we've been successful before. And that we did, we got them interested by doing the business case. And I understand, and but there was a difference, Mr. Uh, CAO, and that was that we wanted the Queen Street and we did the work and we did the heavy lifting and we took it. But in this case, they have predetermined uh, what it is they want. And with respect to uh, Madam Mayor, they were not interested in Queen Street whatsoever at the beginning. And we sat at the table with them and we said, We'll bring you the justification, and we convinced them, and it got on their list. And, and that's so this is exactly the same situation, how we can be successful in saying, let's go on with the EA mm -hmm. process for the project as currently scoped, and then we'll bring to the table the information for the alternative routes. I think that is your best chance in dealing with this and, and getting your end result uh, successful, because we've been successful with that exact approach before. So to my point. Can I, have, can I make an amendment to number two that says subject to Metrolink's agreement to working with staff? Yeah, it's just, if it's worded to on, that degree. On an alternative that, route that north that of Nanwood. We will work with Metrolink. That's, that's so I'm going to move that amendment, that would be fine. Mr. Ch Ms. Madam Chair. Excuse me, I ask for clarification. There's a, it is therefore resolved part one that shows paragraph three and four, and then on the screen now you see part two, paragraphs one, two, three, and there's more. So which... Are you amending number two, I think, is your I'm amending putting number provided? Two. Okay. That, that, that all it's doing, yes. I'm not suggesting take out number four, because that was an amendment to the original motion. So there's and two that number fours and two number twos. Work on it. Yep, okay. Oh. So, uh, well, no. there's not really. No, there are two number twos and two number fours in before, so what? I just want to make sure. Do we want Chief the two Chief Ball, two. could you please? Um, okay, and then we'll. Have a quarter of order in each paragraph. Okay. Okay. Do you have the uh, ability of where to put the, that negotiation ongoing with the uh, one of the motions between the CAO or the chief? Could you help us and then? The recommendation is we vote on the whole main motion, and I'd still like a recorded vote. Thank you. Uh, for you, Madam Mayor, um, to the CAO, I am concerned about the subject to clause, uh, subject to Metrolinks in item two, uh, because I think Metrolinks will look at that. CAO is going to help with the placement of the words that are recommended for amendment that um, give further assurance on, do you want to write it down to help us see what happens when the planning commissioner becomes the CAO? Here's the pen. Oh, the clerk has an idea too. Really and honestly, it's unfortunate that we have to have this conversation, but what there is around this council table and in the history of this city is a lack of confidence in the provincial government to actually deliver for this community. Uh, it's too bad that we have to entertain these kinds of, uh, of amendments and assurances and, and whatnot, but the, but the fact is, 
you know, and going to Councillor Sanderson's point of, and others, you know, for 25 years we've been waiting for go. Uh, the 410 was, uh, you know, coming to a, a complete dead end practically. Uh, we deserve better. Do you have some words for me, yeah. Mr. Court? Councillor Miles, I think Before the request is. Okay, that's fine. Have we got the assurances for Council now? Let me read them so that. Uh, Okay, subject to the staff seeking confirmation from Metrolinks to undertake in cooperation. consultation cooperation of Metrolinks to undertake the preliminary studies for all the alternate routes north of Steele to the downtown. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. So you're getting all all the all of the above. Okay, Council, the question's been called. It's the entire motion now. Mr. Clerk. Well, yes, as amended, but on, on, just to be clear, Council, it's a two-part motion. There's part one and part two is on your screen. If you scroll down to number four and part two, scroll a little bit, please. Uh, there we are. Number four, that staff be directed to undertake. We've added the words, just so it's very clear for everybody. Staff be directed to undertake preliminary studies and seeking the cooperation of Metrolink for all alternative routes north of Queen Street. Okay, all those in favor? North of Steel. Yeah. Just four, and the words are here, but it's so it's amended and it's presented together. So through you, through you, Madam Chair, the amendment is moved to clause four of committee recommendation CW. We're moving the whole term. Yes. I'm sorry. So is the clause as amended is the vote that is before council. And you can't take the whole motion at the same time? You can if you wish. Yeah, we do. I think yep. that's what Councillor Sprovieri said. Recorded Let's do vote. it all. Please call the vote. A recorded vote has been requested on the motions as amended. All in favor, please stand to be counted. Showing in favor of the amended motion is Councillor Miles, Councillor Hames, Councillor Moore, Councillor Gibson, Councillor Paleshi, Mayor Fennell, Councillor Hutton, Councillor Sprovieri, Councillor Dillon, Councillor Callahan. All opposed, please stand to be counted. Showing opposed to the motion is Councillor Sanderson. Madam Mayor, the amended motion from committee carries 10 to 1. Thank you very much, Council. We now move to the next item on, the, well, could we deal with committee minutes at this time? Uh, there was a delegation that wanted to. Okay, oh, sorry. Let's move to this next delegation on the agenda is G2, Chris Novak, and is speaking to uh, an item that's in also the minutes of committee. Is Chris here? Oh, hi, Chris. <laughs> Good afternoon, Madam Mayor, Council Members. I'm grateful for this opportunity to address you all today. I'm appearing before you to strongly protest the illegal use of fireworks by the ordinary citizens. Please understand that my presentation is certainly from a personal and neighborhood level but one that I believe affects all Brampton residents. The recent celebration of Diwali has left me and many of my fellow neighbors bewildered and frightened should this manifestation of fireworks be allowed to continue. Fireworks, after all, contain a certain amount of gunpowder. Should we not be alarmed at this? Perhaps not the potency of a gunshot, but certainly enough to seriously hurt or maim someone. In spite of numerous and multiple advertisements, in spite of official bylaws in place, in spite of the close proximity of today's homes, the rules and regulations for the use of fireworks by private citizens in our city are being flagrantly disobeyed. Safety of neighbors are being ignored to the point of being called racists and, and haters. And young children, most of all, are being put in danger of serious burns. My street has a huge, mature ash tree that the city has generously allowed to be treated against the emerald ash borer. But the trees have a lot of dead wood. Branches are dry and brittle. Roman candles were being shot through these trees, a fire pit on a driveway with flames at that time shooting up to five feet a four-year-old child holding Roman candles and no regard for proper igniting procedures were all part of the celebration at one home for the third 
consecutive year. A neighbor was in fear as she witnessed sparks falling towards her house that was attached. Another, another neighbor stared out the window, hoping that the flames would not travel to the adjoining neighbor's cars. Abuse of neighbor's property as spectators stood in front of her front entrance. Neighbor's vehicles parked 10 feet away as the fire pit flared. And amidst all of this, accusations of hate and racism thrown in their face. Is this civility? Is this what we want our citizens to be treated? Is this to be continued? Is this to be condoned? I thought that Diwali is a festival of celebration, not an ignorance of other people's rights, their safety and value of property. After my second attempt to get through to 311 on that evening and reporting the infraction, I was told by, that a bylaw officer would be sent and was given a service number as reference. I followed up the next day and was told that the officer was sent but found no evidence of an infraction but gave the neighbor an education on the proper use of fireworks. Infuriated, as I am often, I asked to speak to the supervisor whose name I have and he proceeded to tell me with few officers and a hundred calls per hour on that evening alone, it was impossible to enforce the bylaw. At 4.30 the next morning, embers were still burning in that fire pit, unattended, and the floor of the pit had deteriorated from the force of the fire. I have photos of some of this, and, went on, and it is being supported by an affidavit by the adjoining neighbor. This is not meant to be a witch hunt nor a disrespect towards another culture. <coughs> respect begets respect, not anger and accusations. But I fear that as the population of Brampton grows, as the percentage of new Canadians increases, <coughs> it behooves our city and its councillors uh, sorry, I've lost my place, to take means of better enforcing our bylaws to protect its citizens from danger and to enact laws that have bite to those who flagrantly ignore and abuse the safety of each and every person. Do we need to hear the screams of a child who has been burnt by holding a burning ca a Roman candle? What costs are burned down home or an explosion of a car due to this disregard of improper handling. We all know that it is a common factor of humans to ignore certain rules and regs, and that civil disobedience is an occurrence of our present society. Is it not then the responsibility of the city to give assurances that broken and ignored bylaws need to face consequences? In closing, as a private, concerned, and proud Bramptonian, I would emphatically encourage all of you councillors to return to the rules of many years ago and ban the purchase and use of fireworks by ordinary citizens, be it for Canada Day, be it for May 2-4 weekend, New Year's Eve, and Diwali. I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Please don't go away. We do have a person on the board that might want to ask you a question. And thank you for bringing your question and speaking uh, here at council, you know the report is coming back to. to it's on committee council next Wednesday. Okay, this the report Wednesday. that council will consider. It was recommended to be developed last Wednesday to come to the next committee, which is next Wednesday. But to save you coming back, uh, I'm sure the clerks took copious notes. You have a written presentation. Yes, I do. May we have a copy? Absolutely. That's that's even better. And we do have. Uh, two people who would like to speak oh, with right John. Well, thank you, Madam Mayor. And uh, just, just a quick question. Uh, oh. I'm sorry, I just didn't catch your name. Chris Novak. Chris Novak. Um, do you live on a street that has 60-foot lots? In your no. I mean, I live on a street that does not have 60-foot yeah. lots. Okay. All right. Uh, and uh, and uh, you realize that, that, that the bylaw requires that fireworks can only be uh, discharged at 60 foot lots. Yes. Yeah. So, so um, um, 
just to let you know that when we were going through this um, exercise, mm -hmm. uh, there was some suggestions uh, made uh, at the beginning of the process that uh, we, the city, look at uh, organizing uh, organized fireworks in uh, in uh, citywide parks for the various um, events, mm -hmm. such as uh, New New Year's or um, Canada Day, Victoria Day, and Diwali. Mm -hmm. So, so that's something that uh, I'm going to be pushing for, and hopefully. Um, we can, uh, uh, city can organize these events so where the, all the neighborhood people can go there and enjoy the fireworks. Because I do agree with you that um, uh, fireworks are a danger. Uh, the bylaw is not working and, um, you know, we don't want anybody hurt. So uh, we'll, we will certainly push for this when our uh, report comes back. Thank you. Thank you, Council. I'll remind you this matter is a motion for referral, so only questions of the uh, delegation, not uh, opinions that uh, those uh, positions and opinions and debate is reserved for your resolution to next week's council meeting. Councillor, <laughs> I'm sure he'll say it again. Councillor Hames. Thank you. thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Chris, for coming. Um, it's not always easy to talk about neighbours and what they do, but we really do need to hear things like this. and. Somehow, I don't know how we do it because our bylaw offices are doing a lot more than just fireworks on those days, but we do have to find a way of making it a really strong, um, strong advocacy to all of the residents of Brampton to make sure they know and put a large fine up there. Put something, if you are caught with that, the only way a lot of people will desist what they're doing is if they get a really huge fine, and there is a fine with this, I'm not sure how much it is right now, but we should put that up more to make sure that people do respect other people's property. So I thank you for coming today. Um, we're going to refer this with the motion to refer to the next. I'll move that. Madam Chair, we're moving it to when? November 27th, Committee of Council no. meeting for consideration with the report. Okay. Okay? Okay, so oh, thanks. But thanks the again, coming. Chris. Oh, oh okay. I, I, the clerk is asking me to clarify. The discussion was held last Wednesday to refer the discussion for November 27th. There is no report requested by Council. There is none being prepared. It is referring the discussion of last week to have the discussion next week, okay? Uh, be, and I was using the word report, so I wanted to be clear. Uh, Council, all those in favor? Report to consider. Thank you, that's carried. Okay, let's see. Uh, Council, we have the minutes of the Budget Committee of J1. Item J1, it's moved by Councillor Miles and Pileshi that the recommendations in J1 minutes be approved. All those in fit. Councillor Callahan. Earlier on, I can't remember which one it was at, but I'm declaring one here as well. So, uh, through you, Madam Mayor, um, if a member declares a conflict, they'd be very specific what it is they're declaring a conflict and the nature mm -hmm. of the conflict. Well, it's in the Special Committee of Council budget agenda, and it was uh, declared a conflict of interest with respect to the compensation portion of the Public Services Department budget as his son is a part-time employee of the Property Management Division. That's so, all. So for the purpose of the minutes, you were declaring the same conflict? Yeah. So the Special Committee of Council, just to help Council on page 3 of 7, it's item J1, page 3 of 7, there were three declarations of conflict of interest with respect to material uh, being uh, considered at that Special Committee of Council budget meeting. So Councillor Callahan, you are redeclaring your conflict of interest. Uh, with respect to the compensation portion of the Public Services Department as his son is a part-time employee of the Property Management Division. You'll redeclare it. Mr. Clerk, you have that. Council, I'll draw your attention. There were two other conflicts declared 
before we take the vote on these minutes, did you wish to declare, redeclare those conflicts? Councillor Palacio, are you declaring a, you didn't declare no, a conflict, I just, okay. Councillor Gibson, are you declaring the conflict that you, okay. The um, transit portion is my son works for transit. Okay, thank you. And Councillor Miles? The compensation portion of the non-union transit budget as my daughter is an employee. Employee of transit, okay, that's the three that were declared. So if you would please uh, step out of the room momentarily and we will, uh, we will take the vote on that. Is that fair? Councillor Gibson, Miles, and Callahan, thank you for. Yeah, not, on that not on that item. Council, all those in favor of the minutes of the special committee of council, all those in favor? Oh, sorry. Um, Just on that item that they're declaring a conflict, can we do that separate? Because I do want to talk on another item on the minutes. Oh, okay. The budget issue. So. Okay, so what part do we vote on now? Because it is the minutes. Can you point to the minutes that you want to speak to? Because they can come back to that perhaps. Well, I want to speak to the item on, uh, on uh, the budget in the minutes. Well, the minutes are the budget. They're all the budget minutes. Yeah, I know. So do you want to, okay, speak? So can we the take the course? issue of the conflicts first and vote on that separate and then they can come back in to deal with the rest of the con budget okay so we're now approving the minutes that relate to the compensation portion of the discussion during the budget meeting of November 12th uh, with respect to the conflicts that have been declared all those in favor of the discussions related to compensation thank you that's carried the councillors may now return and councillor plushy you want to speak to another item here well, I do, I do, Madam Mayor. I want to speak to the issue of the budget, seeing that the budget chair has tendered her resignation. She just becomes vice chair. And I am vice chair, which means I will be coming budget chair. Okay. So I, as part of budget chair, I would like to change the dates of budget. Yes. Which is my prerogative. Yes. And I would like to move the budget off of December 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. And here is my suggestion that I, we move it to December the 6th. Let me get the right calendar here because I, when I was going over with the clerk, I, I made a mistake. Uh, yeah, that the budget dates be moved to December 6th, 9th, and 10th, which is December 6th, the Friday, Monday and Tuesday of the following week, and a special council meeting, which we did have set aside the council meeting in, on the 11th, that that be changed to an evening meeting for December the 11th so that we will go through the budget process which is still open to the public. They can all attend on the 6th, 9th and 10th and then the actual cut budget meeting, the final budget meeting will be instead of the afternoon of the 11th that it will be on uh, the evening of the 11th so that the public can come to that also uh, to that one and we will deal with the budget at that time. It's either that or the other option is that we move it into January and I have some dates there in well, January. Let's, let's try this. Um, these, uh, can I just say the budget, so that we're moving the budget meeting from December 2, 3, and 4 to That's instead Friday, December 6, Monday, December 9, Tuesday, December 10, and that the budget council meeting set for Wednesday, <laughs> December 11th be moved to 6 p.m. on Wednesday, December 11th. Is that, is yep. that the motion? Okay. Questions? Councillor Gibson. Yes, uh, thank you. Madam Mayor, there are a couple of conflicts in there that we'd have to change. I think we can do that very simple. Yeah. Just for the clerk, there's a regional representation a task force taxi. meeting in there and a taxi cab, the task force meeting there will have to change. So just a heads up to the clerk. Okay. okay. All those in favor? Thank you. And uh, should we add in here that Councillor Pleshi uh, is acknowledged as the chair of budget and then uh, Councillor Miles can become the vice chair? which is what you sometimes do is move chair and vice chair. just declined. Oh. Well, thank you. Okay, well, we'll just have a chair, okay? That. Well, we, we should no, appoint you what? We should you appoint the chair? vice chair. No, you're not. Okay. I want the vice chair. Oh. Okay, I'm not going to put up with any BS anyway. So okay. Right now. Okay. Oh, the vice okay. chair just stays paused there. Okay. <laughs> when did you ever? Uh, <laughs> Council, all in right favor right. of the revised dates and... Uh, Thank you, that's carried.
think you had your hands up. Why don't we do that one more time? I think it's a the mic in place too. And I think it would be uh, appropriate to thank Councillor Miles for her many, many, many years. But I know that's not what you. Uh, we'll save that for another time when we can do it properly. I think that's all part of that. Council, then all in favor of the uh, budget minutes that we were discussing with the changes? Okay, that overall has now been carried. Council, we're now going to J2. J2 is the minutes of committee, right? And that would be, I'm just looking for them in my book. That would be Councillor Miles. I'm looking for J2. Here we are, J2. Page 10 of 10. Is that what I'm looking for? Do I have the, am I taking this, Madam Mayor? Yes. Okay, members of council, you have before you the minutes of the Committee of Council meeting of November the 13th. Are there any comments, questions on that? Councillor Haynes? Oh, sorry. Um, I don't have a question. I just want to um, to bring up a thing on page, what page is it on? Item J2. And uh, it's a recommendation, CW 360-2013, be amended to delete clause, it, clause A and insert instead the following. That where employees do not have sufficient vacation or lieu time balances to cover the designated seasonal closure code period, employees be permitted to request a leave of absence without pay during the designated seasonal closure period, subject to supervisor approval and in accordance with existing city policy and procedures and subject to a break in service for OMA's consideration. Okay, any speakers to that amendment? All in favor? That's carried. Mayor Fennell? Page 10 of 10, I introduced the memorandum at the committee, Open Government Initiative 2014. It was here for a seat with the understanding it would be uh, referred for uh, pre-budget consultation departmental briefing. That uh, meeting, I believe, has been accepted to be under item P1, so I would like that memorandum withdrawn and dealt with today as part of uh, P1. I think we could ask to get one. I that's the one that dealt with real-time disclosures and so on. Okay, if we could move that out. That's my only request. Thank okay. you. All in favor? Okay, back to you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Council. I now have the uh, revised uh, actions of item J2. That's the summary of recommendations. Uh, moved uh, by Councillor Miles, seconded by Councillor Callahan. All those in favor? Thank you. That's carried. There you go. J3, special meeting of the audit committee moved by Councillor Moore, seconded by Councillor Pileschi, that the recommendations be approved. Questions or comments? All in favor? Contrary minded? That's carried. Thank you. Councillor Pileschi, planning committee? Yeah, thanks, Madam Mayor. Uh, committee, you have before you the planning, design, and development committee meetings from November the 18th. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, I pass it back to you, Madam Mayor, for ratification. Thank you, Council. I have the minutes for the Planning Committee. Uh, before me from the Chair, the recommendations outlined in the subject minutes be approved. Questions, <coughs> comments, all those in favour? Thank you. That is carried. Thank you. Are we now moving to P1? Yes. Council, we're now moving to item P1. This is the added item to today's agenda. And this is for uh, discussion or presentation for the 2014 budget. I'll turn that over to uh, who's making the presentation. Or did, Commissioner Simmons, you were back to. Did you want to have questions first, or what would you like to do? Councillor Sprovieri, it's your motion. Um, 
I know that Councillor Gibson is interested in having a presentation, uh, so am I. Um, but given that um, we don't have all the information before us that we have asked in the past, uh, um, I wonder if it's the appropriate time whether uh, it would be best to uh, just to um, uh, refer this to a special uh, meeting uh, uh, when all the information that we requested uh, from staff about our budgets, about our expenditures, uh, not only for all of us, uh, can be made available so that I know there's, uh, it's a, there's a detailed report here, but um, there's certain issues that uh, there seems to be some contradiction. Uh, just for, for instance, um, I think that why we're here with this issue is because um, of the, um, uh, the, the mayor's uh, budget has been uh, requested by the media and it's been reported. Uh, uh, certain things have been reported and it's drawn a lot of public attention. Oh. And, um, and so uh, I know that staff was, uh, as a result of that, um, uh, there was only, a, a, there was a request to have a, a special um, information session, uh, we call the training session. Uh, but as you know, I expressed some fr uh, concerns last week because uh, this uh, session was only uh, going to accommodate uh, a part of the council, not all of the council. Normally, when we had the other sessions, there were two sessions uh, that were scheduled, so all members of council could attend. In this situation, there was only one, which was today at 3 o'clock. So uh, only some of us could have attended and the rest of us would be left out. So uh, because this issue has drawn so much attention, I really believe that it's really appropriate to really um, get all the information before us about all the expenditures that we ask staff to provide. And let's have a meeting, whether it be next Monday night or next uh, Tuesday night, uh, so that the public can all, um, we can have a public session, we can ask the questions with all the information, for instance, Last week, just give you one example. Last week, I asked a question to the com uh, to the CAO, um, uh, something uh, that was reported in the gar in the um, in the newspapers, uh, both the Guardian and the Star, I believe. That um, the mayor receives um, a car allowance of twenty three point twenty three thousand five hundred dollars, I think. Uh, she gets a car, a city car, paid car, plus she has a limo driver, and. Um, and, and supposedly this information was provided by staff to the media. In talking to the mayor today, she denies that uh, she gets a car allowance of 23 point or 22 or 23,000. So uh, I asked that question last week, but I never got an answer, Mr. Uh, CAO. So I, I think that in order to have a really fruitful and productive uh, discussion and, uh, and see whether there are there is room to um, to um, um, to be more um, um, uh, what, how shall I say frugal uh, as a city c council to uh, and and more responsible and and um, um, economic I should say uh, we should have all this information so we can look at where we can cut some of our expenses where we could cut some of the mayor's expenses. Um, so um, I would move uh, that rather than have a discussion here today that without having all the information before us that we have uh, a public meeting, a uh, special session to deal with this issue. And if staff wants to uh, make a presentation today, then I'm fine with that. If uh, in addition, I still would like to move that we have a public meeting uh, where we deal with specifically uh, with mayor, uh, members of council, and CAO uh, budget, and um, but we need all the information before us because we don't have it today, and uh, so I can't really. Uh, I, I'm only speculating. Uh, I can only speculate on things, and I don't want to do that. And I, I don't want to ask people a question. They deny it. And, you know. You know what happened with Rob Ford. You know, uh, the, all these questions were asked, and he denied this. He denied that. And then after. When he, when the proof came out, he started saying, "Oh yes, yes, I did this, I did that, and I'm sorry, and I apologize, and this and that." So, uh, before we want to get into that, let's get all the information before us, and let's have um, a um, 
a proper a productive discussion and how we can be more um, economic in our spendings so we can save some tax tax taxpayers money uh, so that's what I'd like to see happen uh, uh, Ms. madam uh, mayor and uh, and that um, and if everyone is okay with that I'm moving that uh, we move this on to the to a public meeting uh, where uh, all the information can be provided to us. Um, and if other members of council have a problem with that, uh, then uh, that's my motion. Thank you. And the clock, they have to not your motion. Your motion was to do the budget today, but now no, you're no, retracting. No, that's not my motion. Councillor Miles, you I just put the this item on the agenda. No, nope, it's moved and seconded in your writing, Councillor. I to hear from the CAO because there were statements made there that the CAO said that there was three items that the mayor was getting. I like the CAO if that's no, no. the case or correct. No, Councilor Sprover, I, I asked the, the CAO that question. I have the floor on, a, on the point of yeah. floor. And you just made three statements, a car allowance, a car, right. and a driver. Yeah. And I liked, and you said the CAO gave that information. No, I'd like the not, CAO. Not, not. Can, I, can I ask for the CAO to make a comment because he represents the staff? So yeah. you, uh, Madam Mayor, I'm not aware of any staff reporting to the media those specific items. I, I certainly did not. Uh, but I'm not aware of any other members of council. I can give you the facts in the mayor's budget um, She does have a leased vehicle that's been approved by council and has that's been a standard part of the mayor's budget For quite a number of years uh, preceding even the previous mayor preceding this mayor mm -hmm. it's not and, and it's an amount of about twenty one thousand dollars a year and it covers um, the whole uh, lease gas and fuel repair and then at the end of the lease it's returned to the dealership from where it was contracted and then there's a separate item in her budget where she has uh, a council approved budget again to uh, retain the services of a driver for business events and other events as deemed appropriate and that again has been part of the budget uh, for a number, uh, approved for quite a number of years Councillor, oh, oh sorry, do you? I've already spoken, so. Okay. Oh, uh, and then further, on. and all that information will come to council with your budget binders uh, for the budget dates has now been amended uh, this afternoon, and that all that information will be provided to council in a public fashion. Okay. Okay. Councillor Miles. Well, thank you, Madam Mayor. I just wanted to point out that. Uh, all of that information is always part of the budget process every year. So every line item. Councillor Sprovieri's request is in keeping with uh, the budget process that we all agreed to uh, prior today. Um, and um, I, I guess there, there was some confusion because um, anyway, it's already part of the budget process. It's an open process. All the information is provided. It's always provided to all members of council every year. Every time we have a budget process, uh, the um, executive director of the mayor's office comes and provides all of the information on the mayor's budget to council, um, as does uh, Linda McGinnis provides the information on members of council budget and the CAO provides information on his budget. It's in public. Members of the public are able to ask questions. All members of council are able to ask questions. And the budget has been approved by council as a whole annually. Um, this is not um, a subject that has been hidden in the past. In fact, members of council annually um, spend a lot of time asking questions about the mayor's budget and debating our own budget. So I want to, um, for the record, ensure the members of the public that there isn't and has never been any secrecy around the mayor and members of council's budget. The, um, the one area that I think the press is bringing to light is the um, Councillor's discretionary budget, um, and the mayor doesn't have a, I know, a discretionary budget, but members of council certainly do, and that the questions in regards to that are coming to light um, through interviews with, with the Brampton Guardian. But insofar as a, a request to have all of the information made public, it always has been. 
there's there's never been any attempt to hide anything, any question um, that members of council wanted to make in regards to the budgets. Ample opportunity was always afforded um, to mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Councillor Moore. Well, thank you. Just so I'm clear on the process, then, Councillor Spovieri suggested that we discuss what's been in the press in terms of what council and, and mayor, the mayor and members of council are costing, that that's been moved to a special meeting. Is that what you're proposing? Um, Budget chair, can you give us another date so well, people don't have to well, sit December well, 6th, perhaps? Okay. I'm just asking, just yeah, so everybody well, knows. Budget chair, I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to speak to this issue. I'm budget chair of the 2014 budget. That, that's, what, that's what's up for those dates of discussion. What you're talking about is 2013's budget that's been in the paper. Certainly the 2014 budget hasn't been in the paper because we haven't discussed mayors and members of council and there's some, some changes that want to go through forward for that. So we're dealing with two separate issues here. If you want to discuss what's gone on in the past, what's in the newspapers, that's 2013. That's an entirely separate matter. So let's let's decide what we're going to talk about here and deal with it. And I said that in camera to you guys, and that that not uh, in camera. Yes. sorry, not in camera. No, but I, no, it wasn't in camera. Sorry, but I, in the start of the meeting was that you got to decide, and that what we're going to deal with. My understanding today is that I think the mayor, in her report today, is going to answer issues that will have been going on in the press, and everybody's. Not everybody, but certain members have been commenting on it. And that, that is entirely separate and deal with that separate. That's so not a special budget meeting in the evening to deal with 2013's budget. Okay, Councillor Pl Madam Sorry. Mayor, are you going to respond to some of those? Is that what I understand from Councillor Pileshi? Uh, and, and here's the problem I have. Um, I, we absolutely have to have this conversation during our 12, 2014 budget deliberations. I think in order for us to have a, an informed discussion and debate about it, we need to first understand what are some of the expenses that have been uh, incurred year to date 2013, what are the policies that govern that, and um, where are some of the holes that need to be plugged or addressed. And I think that's why we need to have a conversation around and a discussion and some clarification around the year to date 2013 expenses and and I'm going to give an example like we're dealing verbally it seems and through the media on the issue of the vehicle your your vehicle madam madam mayor that's right because that, you haven't asked me you've asked through the star well, it's a queer way no. to ask a conversation but I'm happy okay. to well, respond may I you want to frame your questions and let's do it now well let's do I'll, it when it's I'll, I'll frame it this way please Many of us around this table were on the understanding that Chrysler supplied, supplied the mayor's office with a vehicle. Not and true. For many Good. years. No, no, let's okay, well, I'm glad. Thought. I'm glad. No, I'm just saying. Okay, but Madam, that's how it gets out I, there wrong. You've just said many of us are under the impression that Chrysler supplies the mayor a vehicle. Not true. Okay, next question. I, well, <laughs> Thank you. Good. Maybe I can make my statement, and then okay, we can I'll take deal with it then as we'll with then Good. we can deal with it as a package. But I uh, and so it's not just members of this council. But I was contacted by an individual uh, in the community who who told me uh, that he had firsthand information and has regularly witnessed that your husband drives your vehicle, your children drive your vehicle, and I'm talking about the uh, the Lincoln. Navigator. I'm just, I'm just conveying this. You're conveying the email and, I just got also, from San Graywall three hours ago. Well, this, and we know, I don't I know, don't, you didn't well, discuss I've been it sitting on the here, golf Madam course Mayor, because but, it's too cold um, to golf. And, and further that, and, and he said that uh, he had had a conversation with you and that you had Suspicious. said that the Chrysler 300 was a gift. So who said that? Yeah, well, I'll, uh, we can talk about this after. See, I'm not yeah, prepared okay, to. I'm going to let you no, finish. No, I, I don't. And it's a fair question, please Madam report, Mayor. Please report the I'm just saying, statements. I think we need to clarify the whole role around the vehicle. I didn't know that the city leased a vehicle for you. I was always on the understanding. I can, maybe it's, it's old history around uh, Peter Robertson uh, when... Uh, the mayor of the city always drove a Chrysler. I'm just, and, and I'm glad you have the opportunity to clarify that. 
Um, but, oh, well, no, the issue of the vehicle seems to be a big issue in this community and, oh, and in the press. So I think it's not something I've raised in the past. And as um, soon as you're we, finished, I, I ang yeah, I'm I, anxious to put the I, facts out there because this is a good opportunity to do that. And I will be taking every opportunity to do that because yeah, and it's it, important to have the <laughs> truth out. Truth trumps evil. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Um, and Matt, but Madam Mayor, in terms of some of the, um, I guess, incompleteness in the expense summary that was posted on the online uh, Guardian, uh, there are examples of trips that there is accommodation, but there isn't airfare, or there's airfare and accommodation, and so on. So I think that when you report back so that we can have the conversation. Let's do it now. Let's do it now. Well, no, because we don't have it all in front of us. I've asked uh, <laughs> CAO Corbett. So we just need to, in, under, in order for us to, to actually have a policy that is that is truly transparent so that when we do travel, we understand where the accommodation is being charged, where the airfare is being charged, where other expenses associated with it are being charged. But when only part of it appears on an expense summary, whether it's yours, mine, or anybody else's, mm -hmm. people are clear of what the trip was for. I do have some questions, and maybe you can are prepared to respond to them today. Maybe not, and maybe it's something that has to come back to the meeting when we have the more fulsome discussion. But, you know, I was surprised to see that you'd made a trip to Atlantic Canada and to, uh, to Alberta. I'm not... I don't know what those uh, trips were for. There was never a head of council report back to us on those. So you may be prepared to respond to that today. You may not, not be, but I'm um, I do think that it does, you know, we need to better understand as members of council. When you are not in the municipality, then who's in charge? I mean, it, it's a big issue. If, if we don't know that you're here and there, if there is an emergency, uh, I understand that there is an acting mayor, but you know what's the the roles and responsibilities ar around that? I, it's just a, two trips that I wasn't aware that you had taken, Madam Mayor, and um, and I think need to be um, need to be addressed so that we understand uh, when you're not in the municipality and what that is for. So is, this is car, lease, and trips. Does that summarize? Well, if you could address the whole package of well, the I will. Vehicle, I, think I think every council important. should uh, get this off their chest. It's not a matter of getting it off the chest. I think it's, uh, you know, okay. and, and let's be clear. This is um, many of the questions that have come from taxpayers in the municipality, and you know, yes, we need answers around this table, but I think the taxpayers need answers as well. Absolutely. Are you are you okay? Yeah, sure. Okay, for Councillor, now. Councillor Plushy, then Councillor Sprovieri, oh. then Councillor Miles, and then I'll speak to the salient points. And if there's any questions, you can all come back on. And of course, there's public question there. period because there might be some questions in the audience. We don't want to cut off the debate. Uh, Councillor Pl oh, Councillor Sprovieri. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And you know, um, I, I wasn't really prepared to go into this today, but if that's a will, uh, let's do it. So, so. Yeah. The policy, we need to understand but where the various accountings right. are done for exactly. that. Exactly, and you know, and that, that is why I asked for public meeting, Madam Mayor, because we we're all getting criticized. Not only you, but even us, uh, me. I had a. Uh, email uh, um, exchange with uh, the media um, for the last two days where um, the uh, reporter has found some of my uh, spendings questionable and, and wanted to have justification. And I'm sure that all of us may have some of these, um, how we spend our money may be questioned by the public. So, in order for me, the reason I, I'd like to have a public meeting is so that once the public becomes aware of how we're all spending our money that's been allocated to us, and they find some problems or concerns with uh, any one of our uh, how we spend, we can move on and make some adjustments, just like you suggested. You said let's let's look at it, and I think that's why you wanted to have this informal um, meeting this afternoon to look exactly at that, to look at 
how we, can we uh, adjust what we're doing to make it more uh, pleasing to the public the, who's paying the, the bill. And, and that's the, the whole uh, intention of this exercise, is to uh, actually have this um, uh, discussion. I'm sure if you go through my budget, which is here, you'll probably find something that you question whether it, it was reasonable or appropriate. And when I look at your budget, I, you know, I, there's a few things that I'm questioning. This is, was this appropriate? Was this well-spent money? Was this really doing the job? Uh, it was spent. There was the money spent for the purpose it was that it was allocated to you in the budget. Now, uh, just for an example, uh, just one example. I used the car example, and I'll expand that. For instance, um, a few years ago, you came to council and you said, you know, even though I get the car allowance and fine, but you know, I think I need a, a chauffeur or a limo uh, to drive me around places. And uh, because of my schedule, I go here, I go there, and I know I see you. You go a lot of places. Uh, whether it's necessary or not, you know, that could be questioned, whether you need to go to all these things that uh, to in, in every ward that I believe some of these are can be handled by the local councillors, you know, like a school opening or a little business opening. You know, do you need to be there, uh, all these events? Does a mayor need to have to go to these small... Um, I know you, you want to have a presence. I know you want to um, you want to support the, the population. But do you really need to go to these places and have a, a limo driver to take you to this school, to that school, to this little, little opening here, and, and 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 this party, and that birthday, and that wedding, and 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 so on and so forth. So I really and and, and so that's what this driver is for. It takes you around, and I know that some places you go. Uh, people get very excited to see the mayor, you know, and they, they all, uh, how, you know, they all circle you around because they want to have a picture with the mayor. And sometimes you feel intimidated, and I you know, I and, never feel intimidated. And, well, that, that's what you said to uh, uh, to my constituent that you, it's for safety. Uh, you said that you need a driver because of safety. Yeah. That's what you told uh, my constituent in an email. So, so I don't know what kind of safety concerns you have. If you have a safety concern, what about the rest of us? Should we be co equally concerned that uh, we are members of council and when we go places, uh, we should be watching ourselves because somebody may pay, take a, a shot at us? I, you know, I've, got, I've gotten threatened two times in, my, uh, in the last couple of years. Uh, you know, and do, am I afraid to go around? Even after t two threats, I'm not afraid because I'm not doing anything wrong. So why should I be afraid? So really, now, you know, we, we also, you came to us and you said, you know, I need a, a media person, uh, for instance, uh, uh, someone to, or a, a political assistant or some. So we gave you one, you know. So now I don't know what really that person does, except I see some news releases that he gives us uh, um, once in a while, you know, the mayor says this and the mayor says that. Uh, I see this person with you in different events uh, that you go around with a limo driver. So uh, there's three people going around. So uh, is that really necessary? Can, can we look at perhaps um, providing a car and it says, okay, your political as uh, entourage or political assistant, he's the driver for you and he can take you around from here and there and everywhere and you can make your showings and you can make your appearance and you don't really need a limo driver to end at a cost of forty-five thousand dollars. I mean, I'm looking for efficiencies. I'm looking for not only in your budget, but even in my budget. Do I want to uh, every time someone calls me as John? Can you donate to this and donate to that? Um, do I really want to do that? You know, I I really don't. But you know, we're expected to because it's part of our uh, people expected. So we give a donation: a hundred dollars here, fifty dollars there. Two hundred dollars there, but you know when I look at your, uh, uh, you 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 don't give fifty dollars, a hundred dollars. You give a thousand, two thousand, five thousand, and and a lot of money. It, uh, so you're using your, uh, you're a, a lot more generous than we are with uh, because we have a limited amount. You may have a limited amount, but you have a lot more than we have. So so you give a lot more. You know I I look at that one line item, and that this is really what really gets me is. Uh, photography service for your New Year's levy. You know, in 2010, uh, you charged $2,544, I believe. 
2011, you charged $850. 2012, you charged uh, the same as uh, the year before, uh, $2,544. So I asked, holy smokes, is this a typo, I said, or did uh, she submit the same bill twice? Uh, you know, because it's exactly the same amount uh, if you look at your schedule here or your budget. So, you know, these things are, are on my mind. Uh, they're on people's minds. And, and I'm sure if you go through my budget, you may question why, did John, why am I giving uh, $1,700 of taxpayers' money to support the Gore Seniors to rent the Ebenezer Hall? Uh, that's what I do. Every year, I... I, I it's 4500 Is it 4500 Yes. Yeah, okay. So why do I do that? So I said, that's a lot of money. So I say, okay, uh, Ebenezer Hall belongs to the city. The money goes to, I, out of one pocket of the city, it goes to another pocket of the city. So really, uh, no, the city is not really, uh, the taxpayer is really not out of any money. The only thing that they cost the city maybe is to, uh, well, the, the, the seniors, they pay their rent and they pay for the hydro and they pay for the, for the heat. So, you know, so these kind of things we can discuss. Is it appropriate for me to give the 4500 to the Gore seniors? on a yearly basis. No, Maybe that's some people may say, John. no, we don't feel it is appropriate. Sorry, so I'll John, say, that's fine. Only three years. That's three okay, years. three years. So I'll say, fine. I'm willing to take that out because if that's a council policy and the public's against that, I'm willing to take it out. So I, I want to see a process where we are prepared to start cutting some of the things that we've been spending on and come up with a policy. So the only way that we can go on to the next uh, budget in 2014 is to figure out what we've been doing wrong uh, based on public perception, public opinion, and public um, uh, will. What have we been doing wrong? And the only way to get that is not through the media that we've been getting it through, uh, but through a public process. Just like we went through uh, we went through the council reorganization and uh, we looked at increasing our, our numbers to 12 uh, there was two or three people came out. The Board of Trade took a stand. No way. You know, based on those few um, uh, comments, we said, okay, forget it. No, you know, uh, that would have been, a, I think, a great solution for, for us to solve our problems around this table. Uh, you took it on to yourself to say, I'm going to go to the province and I'm going to get all of us to the regional table. Well, that didn't happen. And I don't think it's going to happen. You know, uh, so, so here's, this is where I'm coming from. And this is what I, I believe. We need to have a session to look at all of us, each other, and see where we, what we're all doing that uh, may be offensive or inappropriate, and let's make adjustments. And the only way we could do that is to get the public opinion, whether it be one person or five people or ten people. Let's hear from the public. We'll give all the public an opportunity to come before us and tell us what they think about how we're spending their money. And then let's make the adjustments. So this is why I'm still moving that we have a special uh, public meeting, not to deal with the 2014 budget, but to deal with what we've been doing in the past so we can make, uh, make the adjustments. Okay? Thank you. So I'm just getting the latest motion that is being interpreted. I'll leave it to you. We'll go to Councillor Miles and then... Uh, if council's interested in the answers to the questions. I'm interested. I'm, oh, okay. Is that it? Thank you. Okay, council, let me just uh, be very, very clear. Sorry, ma'am. I, I got something wrong. Oh, you want to add to the list? Yeah. Oh, sure. What, I'm just... Councillor Sanderson, would you like to speak first? The first, what, I mean ahead of you? Yes. Yeah. Sure, please. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. John, can you just give me the rundown on the car again? So the car is leased. Uh, the, car, the, the council approved budget is for a leased car. Um, it goes with the term of a lease, and it's a budgeted amount that includes fuel. So the lease payments actually come out of the mayor's budget? The mayor's budget. Okay. And then uh, at the end of the lease, as on all typical car leases, it can be returned to the dealership. Okay, so the, the, uh, the car allowance is how much? It's a, it's a combined uh, line item or utilities and fuel, what is it? and that includes the car, as I said, plus the... Um, fuel and maintenance and repair. It's, uh, it has 2013 budget, it was 21,000, um, and the actual is 21,000 in the budget. 
that will come forward will also be 21,000 for 2014, showing a zero percent change. And that covers uh, insurance, maintenance, that's fuel. Whole, that's that. That's intended to cover the whole operation of the car. Twenty, and, and it's twenty-one thousand. Correct. What's the lease payment on the car? I don't have that information for you today. The actual payment. Oh, do you want that number? Yeah. yeah. Chief Listen Chief of that. Staff Newman can provide that. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, lease payment is one thousand three hundred ninety-seven dollars a month. So. They're fourteen hundred dollars a month. Well, that doesn't leave much for fuel and uh, insurance. Um, okay, uh, Madam Mayor, F FCM um, last year in Vancouver, for instance, and I'm just using that as an example. Mm -hmm. There would have been quite an expenditure for when you were running for election and all that. Mm -hmm. What budget does that one come out? Of? So I can address that as well, Mayor Fennell, through you. Okay, sure, go uh, ahead. Why don't we let the Chief of Staff answer for okay. those questions? The third VP uh, was endorsed by this council to support Mayor Fennell in her bid to become the third VP. Those expenses were taken out of our operating budget. There was no additional expense. Out of what, what the government account or the, the mayor's budget? Out of the mayor's budget. Okay, there was no additional expense for the for the actual campaign? No. There was not. Even though there was three staff members out there? Again, that's budgeted through the FCM account, but if you're talking about the actual suite, is that what we're talking about? What are we no, talk I'm talking about the actual, the actual campaign itself. Obviously, there's a cost to putting on the campaign. Mm -hmm. There was a bunch of giveaways and et cetera. There was some staff members out there. Yeah, part of... And uh, there was a, sorry, and, and yeah. there was also a hospitality suite. Yeah, the hospitality suite was sponsored by businesses in this community at no cost to the taxpayer. Okay. Um, you will recall that Mayor Fennell received endorsement from this council to support her efforts to become third VP. That also included staff support. So that all come out of the government account? Uh, I'd have to check that, but I can get back to you on that. Okay. Um, I noticed in the, uh, in the, uh, in the, especially the stuff that was in the media, the cellular bills um, in 2011 was $8,900. In 2012 it was $6,600. Is that the department? Mayor Fennell's a very busy mayor. She's on her phone constantly talking to residents and Blackberry. Okay. We, have, we have the best package that's negotiated through IT that we can get. IT sets up the package for Mayor Fennell and we're constantly taking a look at that to see if there's a better package. We have the best package they've provided. Okay, in the, uh, also in there, it says the mayor's lunch for the arts, $14,500. What would that be for? Um, doesn't sound There's right. another one for $5,000. $5,000? Five $5,000 is a sponsorship to the Brampton Arts Council to help them uh, raise funds for their ongoing community. The $14,000, I'm not familiar with that. If, that. if you can point that line out. That line would be probably out. three years worth. Oh, I'm sorry. That would be that. Each year, Mayor Fennell gives $5,000 to the Brampton Arts Council. That's just a sponsorship? Through spot, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's nothing to do with the lunch then? Uh, you, well, it, it would be, I, I believe, I'm not, Marnie's not here, but I believe that that is put towards their fundraising effort at that lunch. Okay, what about the mayor's youth team? Is that a, is that a mayor's initiative? Is it sponsored by the mayor, or is that a city initiative? No, nope, that is a mayor's initiative, and it is sponsored through the mayor's budget. Even the staff member? Staff member is not in our budget, but because it's a part-time piece for them. It would be the same as uh, Clean City. We work with them all the time, but they're not in our budget. But there is a full-time staff member, right? Uh, I believe that the person in question is part-time to that. So it's not, his full responsibility is not youth. I believe he has several portfolios okay. that he looks after. I was, well, actually it was on TV the other night, I was watching Rogers and there was three, two or three of them on, yeah. on a phone-in show and they all had the mayor's youth team uh, jerseys and stuff on. That's all paid for through the? 
through our budget, yes. Yeah. So that's what that eight hundred seventy-three dollars. Yeah. And that is an actual line item in our budget called the youth team, and council approves that every year. Um, and somebody already mentioned the mayor's levy, the cost of the uh, photography. I noticed quite a few other uh, items in here related to ph photography, and one of them was an, at an opening of a church, six hundred and ten bucks, mm -hmm. just for the opening of the church. Depending on the time the photographer stays there on weekends, yeah, that all that all plays into it. And those those photographs are the possession of the city of Brampton. So if it's a large momentous occasion, like an opening of a church, then the city has access to those photographs. I believe Mayor Fennell believes that it's important images to capture for this community. Okay, I'm still puzzled by the car, because if you're paying that much in lease payments. That does not leave a whole lot for fuel and, 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 and insurance and um, the maintenance. There'll be no maintenance. It's a brand new vehicle. But definitely, uh, uh, is, is the car in the city's name and privately named? Or? The car is leased between uh, the corporation and the leasing company. So then the corporation's picking up the insurance? Um, I believe it comes out of that budgeted piece, that all, the, all in that one budget, but I have to confirm that for you. Because some of that stuff has to come out of another budget. It can't come out of the. Uh, it can't come out of the uh, twenty-one thousand. I'll, I'll confirm that. And the, the fuel, for instance, is that all billed separately? That's in that account as well. Okay, that's it for now. Okay. Councillor Palashi, and then well, Councillor. I just, I just want to talk about cars. Um, I mean, you know, it's it's easy to talk about that. I mean, we, the councillors here, we all get twelve thousand dollars a year for for a car allowance. And out of that, it's what car we choose to drive, and what we gas we we choose to pay, well, what we pay in gas, and what we pay in insurance. So, it's I guess it's you look at it in in, in the overall case. I mean, in my case, in wards two and six, and, and that, so it's a fairly large area, and I drive, but I I, I like the car that I got in May, and uh, I chose to pay something that takes up the majority of my lease payment or sorry, the majority of my compensation for the car, and I pay the gas out of my pocket, and I pay my insurance out of my pocket, and that because of the vehicle that I chose to drive, and that's, we, we've always done that right, at, at, at council here. So, you know, we approve the, the car allowances as, as a council, and we approve the budget. So rather than picking on one individual, let's tell the press, we all get 12 grand a year. And it's, well, I won't even talk about what Mississauga gets, you know, the report on theirs. Yeah, 18000 in that a year. Mississauga, I guess, I guess in Mississauga, cars cost more than what they do in Brampton, even though our insurance is a hell of a lot higher than Brampton than what it is in Mississauga. So, you know, if we're going to talk cars, let's talk all. That's why I said at the be beginning of the meeting, if we're going to talk about these issues, then be prepared to talk about ourselves also and, know, and, and what we get as, uh, as compensation for vehicles too. So if the public doesn't know it, every one of you around here gets twelve grand a year, and that for your vehicle. But you can buy it with. Councillor, sorry, Councillor Callahan. Yeah, just to bring a little bit of uh, neighborliness to this, I, I do remember in the discussions I think last year at budget time, or maybe it was the first year that uh, <coughs> uh, a car was made available to the mayor think on my request because I was concerned about the question of whether she went out to an event and uh, imbibed. She might be in trouble because that has happened in the past, not with her. So I can confirm that she did have at least that car. I don't know about the other one. I was quite surprised about the other one, but I do agree with that one. The, uh, there were groups, Madam Mayor, such as Carabram. Where, where did that money come from? It, was it what are you asking me? Well, the, you, as I understand it, you gave them $12,000 or $1,000 each pavilion. Is that right? Uh, Councillor, since that's a direct question, no, I have not given Carabram uh, $1,000 or $2,000 per pavilion. How much did you give them? Nothing. You, they didn't receive any money from you at all? Not from me. Not from the city. Well, who would they have received it from? Well, they have a variety of sponsorships. I think you're referring to stepping out for Brampton, Inc., yeah. and their decision to support Carabram and whoever else they decide to support. But that is not taxpayers' money, and it's not part of the 
13, 14, or any budget of the city of Brampton. Well, they've been receiving that money for how many years? I, I don't know. Because stepping out, when was stepping out uh, incorporated? I, I, you'd have to go and uh, ask them. You don't know it's when it was. an independent corporation. I'm not involved. Did you at any time, uh, recognizing that stepping out wasn't there for the full time, was there any time at which you used your own money for, for uh, Care Brown? I don't know. I'd have to ask my staff because my staff handled the request for funding and provide the funding in accordance with council policy within the budget that council approves for the, let me just read it from the document you looked at, advertising, marketing, and promotion, and you allocate the office of the mayor an annual budget, and from that budget, uh, my staff makes the decision uh, who gets funding. Mayor Fennell, we have given to Carebrand, but it's only in terms of an ad in their passport. Oh, I see. Thank you. Could we um, get some sort of a receipt for that for the next uh, go around? Uh, they, well, they would have, in, yeah, the Treasury would have that. They would have invoiced us for the cost of the ad to be in their passport. So, yeah, we can get that. Okay. Now, the mayor does a, I have to say, a marvelous job of bringing people together, as for instance, uh, What's the one? It's one with all young people. Where Mayor you, Deasy? Yeah. Um, where, where, where they sit are at events and they collect the, the uh, uh, postal code of those individuals. Oh, the Mayor's Catch the Spirit team? That's it, yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, the Mayor's Catch the Spirit, as near as I can tell, is, uh, and I, I understand you're a politician, but it's not, not, a, uh, not trying to be downer on you, but um, every... I think it was every week the Guardian would have a uh, <coughs> indication of Catch the Spirit events and your name there as the mayor. No, that's fine. That's part of politics. Was that paid out of your out of your budget or was it paid out of some other account? Well, I can tell you that Catch the Spirit is run by stepping out for Brampton and since the inception of the idea of a way to communicate with our residents all the wonderful things going on to enable them to make the choice to come, the Brampton Guardian has uh, dedicated that space for a complimentary uh, information. I'm not part of it. I don't select the events. I don't do the design. I see it in the Guardian as you do. It's not a function of the city, but I think you would agree it's very helpful for our residents thanks to the many volunteers who dedicate themselves to ensuring people know what's going on. Okay, it's, I, not a, it's not part of our budget. So it comes out of some, some other place? It comes out of nothing to do with the city of Brampton, perhaps, uh, Mr. Newman. Um, Mayor Fennell, the, Catch the Spirit is not part of any of your office expenditures. It's not, it's not a city entity. Thank you. It, it, was it, was it, just, I've got the yeah, was it ever, was it ever a, a hmm? directly with the mayor? I don't understand that question. Are you asking, is it ever out of would, our office? Well, no. you say they have absolutely no connection with the mayor at all. Well, they use Mayor Fennell's spirit to promote community events. Okay. But they're not paid through the budget of the mayor? Or? I, in all fairness, I, I, I can't answer these questions because I'm not, my responsibility is city taxpayers' dollars and Mayor Fennell's account. Catch the spirit is not part of that, so I can't answer questions on that. And I've been here before last year and answered these same questions. Well, I wasn't here. It is not that. part of our office. I wasn't here to ask you the question. In fact, Councillor Callahan, I believe you asked those questions last year. I don't think so. In any event, uh, there are also indications of various events that have been held at the Rose where uh, numerous people known to the mayor uh, have gotten there and they've gotten their credit. I don't blame them for that because that's, a lot of us have done the same thing, but uh, well, I want to find out how, how many times was that used? No, we don't use it. <laughs> you don't use it at all? Again, that is not administered out of our office, so I'm, I'm not the person you should be directing those questions to. If it's Stepping Out Inc., th then perhaps you could talk to them. I, I don't know, Councillor. Well, well, who are the people involved? In I that? don't know, Councillor. I'm not involved with that organization. I don't know how many times I have to say that. You have no connection with them whatsoever? I have no connection with Stepping Out Inc., Catch the Spirit. None. Never, never talk to them. Oh, actually, I should. I, I apologize. I'm actually on the email news blast for Catch the Spirit, so I can find out what's going on in this community. And uh, do you ever talk to these people? 
In what capacity? Well, I mean... You mean to say hi, hello? You're, you're the chief of staff of Correct, the and I'm telling you, as the chief of staff, I do not deal with stepping out ink or catch the spirit. Okay, but you must have some connection with him. I mean, otherwise, <laughs> what, we're, what you're telling us is that uh, 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 these people sort of are there, but you never talk to them or ne I never see them. Well, Councillor Callahan, I do know that Heather Pickin is involved, and she, if she was to walk down the street, I would say hello to her. What's Heather Pickin involved in? Is she... Uh, <laughs> She's not involved anymore. Oh, She's not involved. I, I How would Tether you is not involved anymore. Okay. All right, now things like um, events such as golf games. I, 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 I got a whole I got a whole binder here. I'm ready it's to fine. Go, go right ahead. Absolutely. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. I seem to be getting under people's skin for some reason. I don't not know why. getting under mine, Councilor. Well, Jeez, you're, you're doing a good job at Madam Mayor. Some of the others are getting a little. Little antsy. All right, I'll leave questions later on. I understand we'd be back again. Councillor Sprovier, you're back on. Yeah, well, you know, I, I wasn't really hoping to have this, all these detailed. Uh, I have uh, I have a whole bunch. I, I, I want to be here till you want to order supper maybe, and we'll be here all night. Well, Fine, people you know, know me. I, I, I only sleep four hours a night. So. Oh, yeah. But but I don't think I don't think I don't think, or supper I say. But, you know, uh, I know that Councillor Callahan's always been on this issue about the Mayor's Gala. Now it's called stepping out to the golf tournament. And we, really, this is not the appropriate forum to ask the question, Councillor Callahan. But perhaps um, maybe we should be uh, somehow uh, have a session where we can ask some questions of the board uh, to because uh, the the um, the organization uh, really is sprung the uh, the catch in the spirit board. Uh, yeah, we can. Uh, well, I don't know if they're going to disclose information. We're a private board. Yeah, but it's all related to the, the mayor. The mayor and the board is connected. The, the stepping out. If the mayor d was not sponsoring this gala, or stepping out the gala or the golf tournament, do you think that all those developers and business and people would would attend would attend uh, these uh, functions where they have to pay $700 a it's ticket? A, a you know, I know it's not, and that, and, but I'd like to have an opportunity to have uh, those people before us. Well, then, you know, somebody's got to be held accountable. You know, you know I, I check out uh, the, the website. I see in 2011, uh, 750000 was raised. 550 for expenses, 200 for the various organizations and charities. Holy smokes, I said, that's a pretty expensive, uh, a, a huge expense. So, and who, where's the money coming from? It's coming from the builders, mostly. And where's the mil builders? They pass on this money on to the homeowner who buy the new homes. You know, they, they pass on these expenses to their, they write it off their businesses, they're off the taxes, you know. So, you know, there's a, Somehow we have to get to the bottom of this because uh, we know we've been mummed here. We can't speak about it, but yet there is a, an air of connection here, and we have to get the answers on that too. You know, so uh, on the other issues, in uh, I uh, specifically on that uh, photography thing. You know, 2011, 2012, 2010, uh, 2010 to, uh, was 2,544. 2011 was 845, 2012 was again um, 2,544, exactly the same amount, to the T. Yep. Now to me, does that, what does that tell me? In, uh, in 2011, you had less people coming through and so they you had less, less uh, pictures taken? No, through you, what, uh, how, through how you do you explain that? Through your Mayor Fennell, I believe they're two different items. The $2,500 you see is for January 1st, the mayor's uh, New Year's levy. Right. Those people are given a take-home souvenir of photography. The one, bef I believe the 800 is for the uh, New Year's Eve, not the levy. The night before. The night before. Oh, That's so why the two different oh, prices. So there's a, a, double, a double event. So well, it's two different yeah. photographers. It's oh. two different events. Okay. So, so taking a picture of the mayor is, um, you think it's um, really... Um, an appropriate uh, expenditure of Well, I think you would have to ask all the families that line up for three hours to get their picture. Oh, really? But it's a mayor's choice, though, to spend that. But you, that's, that's, in, that's an, in a council-approved budget, yes. 
Yeah, but we don't specifically uh, approve a certain amount of money for taking photography, uh, photographs, do we? Is there a line item to say $2,500 for photographs uh, or is there a line item for photographs? No, but I okay. operate within a budget to so. stay within a budget. Right. So, so in other words, within it, policy and so procedures set by you, this council. If we gave you a million dollars, you spend, you blow the whole million then. Not necessarily. Yeah, uh, that's what. It, well, you've been blowing every, uh, the whole budget up till now. Councillor, as a tax, as a taxpayer and a resident of this community, yeah. I don't blow anything. Well, to me, some of these are blowing. Ian, they're blowing. I, I to me, as a taxpayer and a resident, to me, taking pictures and. For $2,500 with people, that's to me is an improper use of taxpayers' money. Sure, the people who take the picture may think it's great, but what about the rest of the people, the other uh, 550,000 people that don't take the picture with the mayor? Well, for you to spend $2,500 on a security system for your home, are you saying yeah. you're not worried yeah, about Yeah, thanks to your buddy that uh, they put a... How did the taxpayers say that? Why? Because I got threatened by two times, and one of the people you know who uh, I got a threat from. A threat from. Yeah, I have a security I paid for it myself, for the record. Well, I, I was told by the city staff that the city paid for it. Uh, Pardon? Out of your account, I was told. That is, that is not true. Well, that is not true. I don't know. That's, that's, why, that's why I that's said, uh, <laughs> who else got an alarm system paid by the city? And I was told the mayor and Councilor Dillon. Wow. And I says, okay, for that fact. And otherwise, I $2,500, I paid for my own. Mr. Passon, have, have you or your staff represented that the security system, it's six cameras, by the way, uh, DVD, and it records, and we've bought it from a local company, and we've had the cameras changed and upgraded. It has a tele-doorbell, and uh, have, have those expenses ever, the cost of that system, maintenance or change, cam has that ever been brought? Julian Passon or my chief of staff, Mr. Newman, have you seen a nickel of taxpayers' money for anything uh, attached to my home? Uh, no, I haven't, Madam Mayor. Thank you. No, Mayor Fennell. Or, Thank or, you. Uh, or any of the other Thank uh, you. members of council. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Sprovier and well, you. Have you ever finished? been threatened, Madam Mayor? Councillor, I won't discuss yeah, police okay. matters that have occurred well. or may have occurred and that is inappropriate for this forum. I'm not well. looking for some uh, media yeah. coverage about police matters. Okay. Thank you. Ask the Chief. Uh, Councillor Moore. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I guess I'm a little surprised at uh, uh, Mr. Newman's, um, I guess, tone in responding to the questions. And I certainly, I, I understand on one level, um, but on the other level, I would hope that um, I call you Ian. We were discussing first names before. <laughs> um, Ian and the mayor would both um, understand that the questions are being asked and, and in what spirit they're being asked. Since The Guardian published the story, all of us have been asked. I'm, you know, The mayor has been asked separate questions than what the rest of us have been, and certainly the media have... Uh, asked us a number of questions of clarification around ours. But the questions that have been posed to members of council is, what are you doing? Did you know? And in a lot of these cases, we did not know. And so that is the spirit under which the, the questions are being asked here today. Um, not to put anybody on the defensive, but simply to seek and understand why some of the expenses have been occur incurred what they were for, what the benefit to the taxpayers are. And I understand, Ian, I've never seen you quite so defensive. I understand, um, you know, that, that Councillor Callahan has raised the issue of catch the spirit every year. It, to, I guess, in the budget context, it's his windrows. We understand that. Um, but I also I think, it, no, that's right. But I think, you know, in fairness, and the mayor has stated that no tax, taxpayers' dollars don't support the, ca the uh, stepping out for Brampton. But in actual fact, the numbers demonstrate over previous years that they have. And not just at the city to the tune of 172000 but also at Police Services Board in the region of Peel. So it, it's not... I'm just... 
anybody, it doesn't have it, any fundraising It, is, it is funded, Madam Mayor, You just. I think you just told us that it was funded by stepping out for the arts or stepping out for Brampton. If, if part of the revenue source for stepping out for Brampton has been taxpayers' dollars, I guess that is the spirit in which Councillor Callahan has asked the question. But, but this is simply an opportunity for us as members of council to do our job. People have asked us questions and we can't just um, see the information and say to the tax and, and dismiss it. We approve the budget. Uh, there's no question. Madam Mayor, when she presented her, uh, her report last week, she, uh, you know, held up justifiably the sheet out of the budget book that says that we approved her budget. And so I think in fairness, we do to us, we have a right to ask how that money is spent and what it's being spent on and more in reaction to um, the way the public have reacted to that. So we're just simply, you know, the, the budget says marketing, promotion and advertising. There's a number of things that were in there and, and uh, you know, that, that surprised me. Uh, and I mentioned those earlier, the trip to Halifax, the trip to, uh, to um, Alberta. Alberta. Uh, but the other thing that has been front and center is the policy that we have around travel. It has come to light through this. Uh, and the mayor has said that if the trip is more than five hours, that uh, the policy permits us to upgrade our tickets to first class. And the residents of Brampton are saying, is that the right policy? Should, just because the policy is there, should we be spending that money? And, um, you know, when many of our ta taxpayers in the city, and I'll use the trip to India because I think that was the one um, that, that seems to be uh, in the media these days, you know, a lot of our taxpayers can't afford the front, the, the first class ticket. And so they're saying, I can't afford it, but I'm paying for somebody else to use that ticket. I, I hope you understand that that's a fair question to ask, and, uh, and the mayor has tried her best to respond to that in the media. So, you know, that's, uh, you know, I, I, I don't think that any of us around this table are interested in a free-for-all, but I th do think as members of council, we have to demonstrate that we are doing our best to seek answers on behalf of our taxpayers and for ourselves to better understand how the money is being spent. Okay, thank you. There's no questions then, other than you repeated the trips to Halifax and Alberta. I've noted that, yeah, and I, I will respond. Okay, thank you. The Councillor Sanderson, you're back on the list. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And, and uh, a, a couple of, and, and I'll use Councillor Plushy as an example, has said that uh, we all we all got to be accountable. Everybody's sitting looking at all these binders we got around here, looking at every each and every one of our our different accounts, and therefore, I would like to, for once and for all. We need we need to we need to check the policy. We need to make sure that we you know we're we're all in line, all of us, the mayor and the members of the council, which sometimes I don't believe we are, but I think we need to uh, I think we need to follow the follow the rule. So therefore, I'd like to put a motion forward that staff be directed to undertake a third party forensic audit on all council expenses and the mayor's, and and that the terms of reference of which should be developed in the internal auditor in cooperation with the CAO and report back in Ju uh, January of 2014. I'd like to put this motion forward once and for all so that we can, uh, if there's any wrongdoings, we need, to, we need to get it fixed and cleaned up and move on. Okay, council, anyone else wanna speak? Okay, council, I wanna respond to some of your Sorry. questions because I think it's appropriate that we have that response. So I'm going to say quite clearly that the Office of the Mayor functions within the Council-approved budget each and every year, and we don't go over the budget. I want to talk about the proposal last week and the report we have brought forward for this meeting that we have a departmental budget briefing so we have an opportunity to have the conversation, whether you want to do it in the middle of a Council meeting. I want it to be made clear for Councillor Sprovier, and you can jump on because I mentioned your name, if you feel the need, that I sent a, an entry to the CAO for two 
meeting sessions on Thursday, that's tomorrow, November 21, 10 till noon and 1 till 3 as proposed briefings because we can't all be uh, with the Municipal Act in a quorum and we'd schedule a third one. So at no time did the Mayor ask for tonight's meeting or for a secret meeting or for a little quiet meeting. I asked for what has been done for all the other departments because there is a need for clarification, transparency, review past practice, and maybe have some different rules, guidelines, seek cuts, uh, seek important uh, changes for the mayor and all members of council. It sounds like you don't want to have that meeting uh, during this meeting, but I'm prepared. So this stories that go on and on about secret meetings don't come from my mouth. I'm happy to meet in public. I've been responding to every email, every tweet, every Facebook that is asked about these questions. And by the way, as you know, I'm a high Twitter user. It was said I'm trending on Twitter. Well, that's not true. But anyway, thanks for thinking it. If people want to follow the mayor, at Mayor Fennell, I'd welcome more followers because it's a good way to exchange information. I want to set the record straight about this 180 odd thousand because people have said to me, gee, that's a lot of money in a year. And I said, no, no, it's a $60,000 a year budget. That's three years worth, three years worth, and a little bit of the end of 010, you see, because you were sworn in on December 1. So it's 60000 a year. And yes, it's approved in open council by all of you. I don't set my budget, you do. All of what occurs in your budgets and mine are approved by this council. This mayor operates within the budget, I don't exceed it, and I use it to do the job you deployed me to do. I think it's very important. In the question of the driver, in the budget, there's a line item for the contracted service. We don't exceed it. In fact, we, we're below it. And that has been in the budget for the last 10 years. 10 years. It's been in there 10 years. And that service provides an opportunity, booked by my, it's a flat rate service. It's a flat rate negotiated contract that provides an on-call 24-7 service that is booked by my staff as schedule and safety permits. Let me speak to the safety that Councillor Sprogieri, I think, was in a different zone. Maybe that's why it's a security system. We're talking about driver safety. We're talking about when we go down to Queen's Park and back that we are non-stop working, reviewing, briefing in the back seat of the car. I'm not driving, texting. I'm not taking four hours out of the day. You, Council, have said, and quite frankly, the Chief of Police uh, in days gone by, and uh, many people say that's entirely reasonable. That's entirely reasonable. I mean, the other week we were down to see the Premier down to Queen's Park twice in one week. That's about an hour and a half down in traffic. That includes, for the record, the vehicle that is owned by the company that has the contract. There are no extra fees. If there is parking required, there are no extra fees. The fuel that goes in the vehicle, there are no extra fees. Accompanying the mayor inside of events and staffing the mayor, evenings and weekends, no charge. The contract is for the driving <laughs> service door to door, which gets us safely to the multiple destinations in and out of Toronto and around the GTA that, uh, that are part of doing my job that I feel is important uh, to be done. So that, uh, the car, I, I think we've covered the car. You, Council, have approved this each and every year. Now let's move to the personal vehicle. There's a separate line item in the page that's in your budget book that you've approved well, I have to tell you, it goes back even to my predecessor. This isn't a new line item in the budget. And you be, as Councillor Plushy said, when you're a councillor, you are given a thousand dollars a month to do with as you please. It's intended to offset the cost of a car, 
but it's your money. You might rent or lease a car, buy a car, but it's your money. And that, by the way, isn't shown on the disclosure statements that council is currently posting. It's not shown. It's somewhere else. But our mayor's budget includes all of the costs. It's the most transparent budget that a mayor has. So it's not tucked away. It's right there for all of you to see and subsequently approve. We are provided a line item in the budget for a lease of a vehicle. I don't own it at the end of the lease. It's not mine. It was never mine. Okay? So I think that it's, I, I'm, I'm surprised that you're asking this year when you voted for it for 10 years. But anyway, now the questions are here. I want everyone to hear the truth. Within the 60000 that I proposed last week, we remove from the office of the mayor and do a calculation what we could remove from each of your accounts, and I had spoken to Councillor Plushy and the budget chair, was because some people are saying, that's pandering, it's buying votes. Listen, when we place the wreath on the cenotaph at Remembrance Day, that comes out of this budget. When Grace United Church asks the mayor for the annual $1,000 to help their uh, program in the mornings, that is a letter that comes to Mr. Newman and the budget's there and that money is given. And I've said I'd welcome a debate about who or which organizations you think are not worthy of the money that you and I and all of us are donating. Councillor Sprovieri said, well, you seem to have a lot more than we do. Well, frankly, you have approved the Office of the Mayor for citywide advertising, marketing, and promotion. But if you've analyzed these statements, which I've been called to do over the last couple of days, collectively, you know, we give to 189 organizations. Don't penalize the organizations. I, I propose move all that money over into the uh, budget of the new Office of Community Engagement, perhaps, and have a process by which people would uh, be able to communicate with the City of Brampton to gain that kind of support. This is not me spending. It's not spending on me. I don't buy tickets to sit at a dinner. I certainly don't take my spouse or family to sit at a dinner. I don't golf. If we bought a golf foursome, we, it's a form of donation back to the organization or whoever, I can't even tell you who uses it because we're, we don't golf. I don't golf, eat, or watch hockey on the taxpayer's dime. Yes, there needs to be a review of what people consider appropriate taxpayer expenses. But I want to assure the public that the money that's been donated out of the mayor's account to autistic children, to seniors, to youth, you have not had that detail. You have the line item where you provided 60000 a year advertising, marketing, and promotion. It was brought up ethnic advertising. According to the Municipal Act, the mayor speaks for the municipality. You will recall we didn't, in the past, do city uh, media buys in ethnic media. No, that all came from the office of the mayor. On behalf of the mayor and members of council, why any member of council is using taxpayers' money for media buy, I would say is duplication, frankly, should be cut and is a waste of money. And today, you have a department that puts <laughs> a, an ad for uh, the various greetings and so on. So, it, you know, to say why did that come out of the office of the mayor, well, you put it there. It was to come from the office of the mayor. When, and I'm frequently with some of you, at a business opening, and I present a certificate, you know the words, they've not changed since the last two mayors, on behalf of the mayors and members of council, and it's in a frame for new business openings or congratulating people, that comes out of the mayor's budget. It's not spending on me. It's very important that we understand, I've stayed within the budget, that this council has approved for the functioning of the office of the mayor, and we've not exceeded it. And I welcome the debate on, well, I don't think you should have spent it on this or that. Let me jump to, if I might, photography. 
At the mayor's New Year's Day levy several years ago, because members of council said the line's moving too slow because people want to take their picture with the mayor, we found a company, it's called Event Imaging, that takes the pictures, moves people at about 20 seconds a piece, that's three a minute, and, and I mean we've analyzed it to that, and provides them with a souvenir with their picture with the chief of police, the fire chief, and the mayor. People line up for hours, but it moves it quicker. That transparently comes out of the office of the mayor budget. At the same mayor's New Year's Day levy, there is a second photographer. You've seen the second photographer. They're taking the pictures of the councillors in line. That is not in your budget. I don't know where that is, but mine's transparent. So the question is, do you want to have photography or not? Because that's part of the discussion I wanted to have. Where are all the costs of an elected official? Where's the cost of the photographer that stood and took the pictures of the council each and every year? Frankly, where are the pictures? I don't know. But I know that that's part of that 60000 It's transparent. I think that's very important to, to say. There are many costs associated with elected officials. Calendars, newsletters. That's not in your budget. It is in the mayor's budget because our department is reflecting all of the costs of the office of the mayor. It's very important that we say that. So to post discretionary expenses is showing a fraction of the picture. I'm putting my discretionary expenses up. Well, that's an interesting notion. But to be fair to the taxpayer, in the spirit of what Councillor Spobieri is saying, before you have an, a full public debate, let's equip the public with all the information. Where are those extra costs for the calendar, the newsletter, uh, the photographers that go out with you? You requisition a staff photographer. The opening of St. Eugene de Mazenod Church was such a significant event in the city. The Millennia Project on a Sunday, a staff photographer is not available on a Sunday, so we uh, retained a photographer to forever capture those images for the city's purpose. So I, I, I defend that. I've proposed that all our expenses in the new process be real-time.